an interview with Karen Andriola about her newest book. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. About 25 years ago, when I started homeschooling, I didn't have the internet. Now I'll pause here for a minute to let that sink in. I heard about Charlotte Mason at a state homeschool conference, and immediately I went looking for any books I could find about her methods. One of the first books that I discovered had a purple cover and a colored portrait of Charlotte on the front. Its title felt comforting and reassuring as I started down this unknown path of homeschooling, and it was called The Charlotte Mason Companion by Karen Andriola. Many of you have a copy as well. A few years after that, I traveled across a couple of states in order to hear the author at a smaller homeschool conference. By then, my copy of The Charlotte Mason Companion was well-worn, with lots of yellow highlighting and marginal notes in blue ink. From the very beginning, Karen Andriola took my hand and gave me a tour of Charlotte's wonderful methods mixed with lots of practical ideas of how Karen implemented those methods in her home with her own children. Her love for the Lord, love for her family, and love for Charlotte Mason shone through in her books, and somehow I felt that she also had a loving concern for fellow home-educating moms like me. You can feel that loving concern in her other books, too. How many of you have A Pocket Full of Pine Cones or Lessons from Blackberry Inn? Well, in recent years, I've had the privilege of spending time with Karen and experiencing her care for homeschool moms in person. Despite physical challenges, Karen continues to pour herself out to encourage us, to tell us about good books, and to remind us to cultivate ourselves right along with our children. And she does more than just remind us. She models it in her own life and on her blog. So I was thrilled when she told me that she was writing a new book all about what Karen calls mother culture. Recently, we took a little time to sit in her lovely parlor and chat about this new book. Now, Karen is a deep thinker. And she likes to take her time and choose her words thoughtfully and carefully. So, in preparation for our conversation, she wrote down some of her thoughts in order to make sure she would be able to communicate them clearly from her heart to yours. Listen to this interview to hear her heart on mother culture, an important aspect of homeschooling and living. Today, I'm going to be talking with Karen Andriola about her new book called Mother Culture. Karen, thanks so much for joining us. So Karen, what do you mean by mother culture? A culture is a lifestyle. To me, mother culture is the skillful art of how a mother looks after the ways of her household Mm -hmm. and herself. She creates a culture in the home all her own with a mingling of love and responsibility. A mother does a lot of taking care. But she needs to take care of herself, too. Mm -hmm. So much depends on how she manages her life. That is true. It sounds like you get asked this question a lot. You had an answer ready to go. I do. (laughs) And those who ask are home teaching. They have a heart of devotion for their family, work from sunup to sundown, and sometimes feel overwhelmed. One secret for not feeling overwhelmed is for us to like what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Those things God is calling us to do. When we apply Charlotte Mason's principles to our everyday living, the hours of our day run more smoothly and happily. And these principles enable a mother to not be too exhausted for her husband's company. Now when you say apply Charlotte Mason's principles to our life, can you give me one of those principles? What do you mean by that? Well, as a mother is feeding and cultivating the souls of her children, she's nourishing her own soul with ideas from good books too. Oh, okay, yes. So nourished and refreshed with ideas, she keeps growing closer to God and into the Christian woman God is designing her to be. So why do you think mother culture is important for moms today? Moms want to build a happy home. Quite often in the month of September, when lessons begin, I see comments online, a cry for help. 
My children won't do as I say, is the cry. I'm pulling my hair out. This always grabs my sympathy. Moms want obedient children. This starts with a mother understanding her rock solid position of authority. Her children can be taught to honor this. Authority is a very important foundation. So you're saying that one aspect of mother culture is that the mother needs to understand she has God-given authority. Exactly. Hmm. In the home, father is king, mother is queen. Hmm. Parents serve their children with love, dignity, and a degree of self-sacrifice. In turn, their children are to honor, respect, and obey them. Hmm. Ruling as a servant queen can be hard for a weary mother who's with a circus of children all day. Mm -hmm, yes. But children can be brought in line. Another principle of mother culture is establishing good habits day by day, hour by hour. It is the kind but firm way of bringing up children. Yes, I often tell mothers, you need to require obedience. You don't have to be harsh. You can be kind yet firm. Mm -hmm. Teach a child to obey and you can teach him anything after that. That is so true. Now, what did mother culture look like in your life when your children were young? The lifestyle I created for my children was a day of work, study, play, and worship. I liked giving my children treats in their growing years, too. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't? But I remember that having to say no was part of my day, too. Yeah. When they would ask for screen entertainment, I would often give them a thoughtful no. They might tease me and ask again, but then I would say calmly, the queen has spoken. <laughs> As they matured, they learned that my decisions were fair and stopped teasing me. The little things about mother culture are important too, such as finding time for a little play or anything creative a mother might like to do. Those things that take 10 or 15 minutes, things within easy reach, are the most doable. Yes, those things that just take 10 or 15 minutes. But so often, it is hard for us to think of what those things might be. Do you have any suggestions? You know, it's wise to clean as you go. Yes. Well, do mother culture as you go. Put it throughout your day. Mm -hmm. Little 10-minute mm -hmm. places. For some mothers, it's just, it can be sitting by a window just long enough to finish a glass of iced tea. Yes, those little, as you say, along the way, just taking that little time. Little breathers. Yes. But after my third child was born, I had a sudden urge to learn how to knit mittens. I would relax with a little knitting on a Sunday afternoon. All through my children's growing years, I kept them well supplied with wool mittens of all colors. <laughs> Watching them dig in the snow wearing mommy's mittens was one of my joys. Mm, and now you knit for your grandchildren too, don't you? Yes, <laughs> I really enjoy that. Mm. But knitting isn't every woman's choice. That's true. It's not my choice. I'm weaving. I'm learning crochet? how to weave. No, weaving. I did not crochet or knit. Now my daughters know how to do those things, but I'm just now starting to learn how to weave. So what are some other possibilities besides knitting? Well, that's why in my new book, I talk about the big things in mother culture and the little things all with variety. Mm. For some mothers, the most refreshing part of their day is to take a solitary walk to clear their head and to unwind. Mm -hmm. It could be taking a walk with their husband. You get to talk about things when you're alone, when there's no ears to overhear you. Yes, yes. Other mothers like to garden, photograph flowers, keep a journal, write paper letters, sew curtains, paint furniture, play a musical instrument, mm -hmm. or even ride a horse. <laughs> That's true. The possibilities are endless if we just think about mm -hmm. it, yes. Well, now that your children are grown, do you still do mother culture? And if so, what does it look like? In my Christian life, I followed the old Puritan ethic, work before pleasure. I'm still following that. There is something so satisfying about work done with care and effort. I like that quote that goes like this, duty makes us do things well. Love makes us do them beautifully. Mm. Our work is a kind of worship to God, but our creativity and play are a part of our Christian lives, too. That's true. I mean, God put creativity inside each of us, so that makes total sense. Researching antique quilts, I came upon a remark made by an American pioneer who lived on the prairie in a sod house. When this mother was asked why she sat sewing patchwork quilts by firelight after a day of much labor, she said, I make my quilts as fast as I can to keep my children from freezing and as beautiful as I can to keep my heart from breaking. Oh my. To take part in mother culture is to do things beautifully, to do things that keep your heart from breaking.
to feed your children, yes, but to feed yourself and express yourself too. I did a little sewing while my children were young, but it's only now that my children are adults, married, and all these babies are being born, <laughs> that I've gotten into quilting. Here in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, I'm surrounded by the most alluring fabric shops. <laughs> I love fabric. That can be dangerous to yes, have all those shops. <laughs> One is five minutes from my house. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> but the man of the house never begrudges my growing stash. How nice of him. And I assume you keep it nice and orderly too. Yes, they're in plastic bins. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Now you, you also read a lot, I would assume. Yeah, my last homeschool student graduated 10 years ago. One of the things I miss about home teaching is reading aloud. Mm -hmm. So it is even more important now that I keep reading to myself from that pile of books by my bedside. Mm -hmm. Yes. Charlotte Mason got me into a habit of reading widely. Besides my Bible, which I mostly read on Kindle while the sun is rising, I read history, theology, biography, novels, children's books, and poetry. Mm -hmm. I read every day. Mm -hmm. I collect out of print books. Oh, you do too. Still I have some that. too, yes. <laughs> I'm a grandmother book rescuer. <laughs> some of the best Children's books seem to be those that public library discards. Yes, yes. I like the feeling of preserving these books for future generations. That's so important. And it's so nice to be the grandma with the great library, where the kids always want to come see those books. Now, the book that you have written about mother culture is also going to be a treasure and a gem to so many people. Can you give us a taste of Thank what you. kinds of things are in that book? I worked to make my book as ministering as I could make it. It's taken me years. Yes. The gentle advice I share has its roots in the Bible and the most helpful, inspiring ideas from Charlotte Mason that I've been able to put into practice in my own family. Charlotte Mason's ideas work. Yes, they do. And it will be so reassuring to read someone else's situation and, and showing how Charlotte Mason's ideas worked in your life is going to reassure so many other people. Can you give us an idea of what situations you might have shared from your own life? Well, for instance, my daughter Sophia is a home teacher now. She has three children under 10. We often talk on the telephone long distance. When she's feeling frazzled or overtired, I try to encourage her. The advice I've been giving her has made its way into the book. Oh, good. I guess you could call it Grandmotherly advice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I address those things that concern mothers most. I even have a chapter on marriage harmony. Mm -hmm. I'm getting along with a husband who is our opposite. Uh, yes, opposites attract. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why so many of us end up marrying our opposites. That is so true. So it seems like you're hoping to really meet a need with this book. I can't help seeing the needs around me, Sonia. I remember being lonely as a young stay-at-home mom. So I can sympathize with young mothers today. Neighborhoods are deserted during the day. Yes. And sadly, it's very rare to hear the choice of homeschooling or Christian school supported or even affirmed in the pulpit. Mm. So many home teachers feel like oddballs. Wow. They've told me so. Mm. And home teachers who are the first Christians in their family line are starting from scratch with little, if any, help from their extended family or church. Many have no older woman in the Lord to encourage them. Yes, that Titus II woman that we all, I remember looking for that woman 23 years ago when I started homeschooling. And they are so rare and hard to find. And the ones that I did find were mostly in books. Yes. That was where to find them. Same for me. Yeah. There was a short period of time in Maine when my children were coming of age mm -hmm. where there was an older woman in the Lord in my life. And it was so precious that I had to write about it for the book. Oh. But it was a short period of time. Yes. So being a wife for 40 years mm -hmm. motivates me to make some bold statements in the book okay. that an older woman in the Lord would make. Yes. But probably yes. only in person. <laughs> <laughs> but I've sprinkled them with light humor and cute illustrations. You always find very cute illustrations. I don't know how you find them all. I do some searching. <laughs> I do a lot of searching. <laughs> In dusty old bookstores and junk shops. Yes, yes. Well, those will be wonderful. Can you give us a little taste or a little peek inside at some of your chapter headings, maybe? Oh, yeah, I'd be glad to. My book has many flavors. I talk about doing housework in batches to make good use of time. Oh, yes. 
How to Craft an Understanding is about a mother narrating what she herself is learning. Oh, that's so important. There's a chapter on being like Mary and Martha of the New Testament. Mm. I explain how to avoid the not enough syndrome. Mm -hmm. How, with Charlotte Mason's guidance, we are free to be more the mother and less the teacher. Oh, I love that phrase. You used that in the calendar article that you wrote for us. More the mother and less the teacher. That's such a powerful statement. It's a wonderful freedom that Charlotte Mason gives us. Oh, yes. I talk about chores, courtesy, using imagination, Mm -hmm. being patient and Mm -hmm. brave about children growing up to be best friends. Mm -hmm. It's actually possible. Yes, yes. And about how to be a mother who fosters the love of learning in the lives of her children. It sounds like you are describing how to build a happy home. I think so. These are some of the ways. So what are your hopes and dreams as you send your book out? I very much hope mothers will find the ideas invigorating, especially those mothers who so often have a low battery. My prayer is that those who have read my book, A Charlotte Mason Companion, and have big children now, will read this book and also share it with young mothers to preserve a Christian mother culture, a way of life that seems to be slipping away Mm -hmm. or seems out of reach. Mm -hmm. While my new book does speak directly to the young mother, it gives the experienced mother resourceful ideas for building the body of Christ within a needy homeschool world. It sounds like it's going to be a wonderful book. I can hardly wait to get my hands on it and read it. Thank you for sharing your heart with us in this interview and with all the people who are going to be reading your book. They're going to benefit from the 40 years of experience that the Lord has given you. He's brought specific, particular experiences into your life for a reason. And your sharing from that is going to be such a blessing to so many people. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Sonia. It's so nice to have you in my parlor. Simply Charlotte Mason is pleased to make Karen Andriola's newest book, Mother Culture, available to you. Follow the link in the show notes to order your copy today. You will find the principles on its pages invigorating, instructive, and encouraging. Get out your highlighter. This is another Charlotte Mason classic from Karen Andriola's desk. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe through iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. You can also subscribe to the audio version of this podcast or read the blog post on our website at simplycharlottemason.com. All of those links will be in the notes, along with the link to Karen's new book, Mother Culture. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.